Good evening everyone, it is Scare, back with another video. Now it's been a while, but um, here I am uh, showcasing, releasing and doing a breakdown video of this cannon you see right here. So this cannon, it basically embeds a improvement um, on top of normal parallel fusions or cubic fusions. Um, this wouldn't work with anti-gravities I don't think. But, um, I made this cannon in 2018. Obviously, it's incomplete just because it was a concept cannon. But um, so I made this in 2018, and I wouldn't really, I wouldn't really be doing this video because I, I assume someone else would have come up by it, come up with or showcased this since then. No one's actually even uploaded or anything or anything I could find. So I'm gonna do a video on it. So I'll go over before I explain it. I'll go over the benefits just so you know. So this cannon will shoot one extra game tick on top of normal parallel cubic fusions. Um, left shooting is much, much better. So even though most people can't left shoot with parallel fusions, because um, I've only ever been able to make one that shoots like 32 walls to the left, left shooting with this is super nice. So you'll be able to left shoot easily for like more than 12 chunks. I don't know if it'll be infinite, like the one you see down in the corner, um, but maybe you can. So that's two benefits. Other benefit is that you'll be able to make a faster auto. So like it'll be only a tiny bit, little, little bit faster. So about 0.15 faster. So yeah, a little bit faster. Um, and to make an actual auto will be a lot easier. And the final benefit is that rating will be easier. So I'll explain those last three benefits towards the end. But um. Yeah, you guys understand that what it means when it shoots an extra game tick and that left shooting's easier, but I'll explain that later. So I'm just gonna go over how the cannon works. So assume this is just a normal parallel or cubic cannon, right? So I'll explain the differences. So everything's the same, just the power. The power is instead of instead of it being four game ticks of difference between both powers or two repeated ticks, it's only one game tick between both powers, right? So you might be wondering, so the reason we have four game ticks of difference between both powers is that it creates enough delay for the sand to fall enough, and then enough delay for the hammer to come in and be one block of di difference between both, so that it can full stack without having, or well, without having an enormous amount of hammer, with a normal amount of hammer, I guess. So you might be wondering, you know, if there's only one game tick of difference, isn't the sand and hammer going to be very close together on the wire level when it hits the wall? So that's true, right? So you might be wondering, is it going to, how is it going to full stack with only like this much hammer? Like I'm going to need a lot more hammer, right? Well, no. What's going to happen is, all because of this one TNT here. So this dispenser acts as a splitter. So, if, so for, those, for those of you who are really good with left shooters, will know what a splitter is and how it works. Basically what a splitter does is, when you have entities that are very close together, so very similar um, positions, what a splitter does is it's, it, it separates it into different axes, depending on how you configure it. And what's happening here is, so this splitter is in the hammer, right? I'll just count, I'll just show you guys how much the hammer is. So it's 348 minus the scatter, which is 45. So it's 303 dispensers. So it's, an, it's a normal amount of hammer. So I'm not using a lot of hammer or anything, right? So back to the splitter. What's gonna happen is, this splitter is gonna go off one game tick before the hammer. So when everything's at the wall, so the sand, slab bust, hammer, whatever, when everything's at the wall, this splitter's gonna go off. And what the splitter's gonna do is it's gonna push this sand down one block in one game tick, right? So you know how we just said there was an issue with the sand and hammer being very close together here? Well, now that one splitter actually separates it, so it'll be one block apart. So now it's just like a normal, back to a normal fusion again. So your sand, your um, your hammer's here, your sand's here, and it just full stacks hybrids like normal. Right? So I'll fire it. I'll show you guys down here. Oh, let me turn this thing on. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? So I got my render distance quite low. Um, so as you can see that's the bottom and we're just going to fire it
as you can see it full stacked no issues and it didn't understack or anything like that so yeah so that's how it works now you, you might be wondering like well so what it's just everything's the same it's just splitting before it stacks and hybrids right like what's the benefit of having um you know difference in delay between the power like what's the benefit to this so as I mentioned, so I'll start with the left shooter. As I mentioned before, before the splitter goes off, your hammer and sand is going to be very close together, almost in the same block in terms of wire level. So it's going to be something like this. So pretend the hammer is at the top of this block, right? And then the sand is at the top of the trap door or below it. So it's going to be like a trapdoor amount of difference between both entities. Okay. So that's not that much. But remember, how does this look familiar, this guider? How does it look familiar? We know many left shooters use this sort of guider. Right? And we know some really good left shooters that go like 20, 20 something chunks with this guider. So what we can do is, without even changing it, so obviously it's still a fusion. All we have to do is just change the delay with the hammer. Take off the splitter and add some left shoot TNT. And then it will go straight to the left. Alright, so depending on what ratio you use, you might need to use a splitter. I need to use like two TNT for the splitter. You may not need a splitter at all. Just depends on what ratio you're using. Um so yeah, left shooting with this is much, much better than compared to normal fusions. Alright, so that's that's the main that's the main benefit. The other benefit is that you might be thinking, well, before we get into this benefit, you might be thinking, since this splitter goes off one game tick before the hammer, this cannon will shoot one game tick less than a normal fusion. That's actually wrong. It's actually going to shoot one game tick further than a normal fusion. All right, so normal fusion shoots about seven game ticks, including the explosion game tick. This one shoots eight, including the explosion game tick. So what I'll do is I'll delete this wall right now. I'll show you guys how far, or I'll show you guys that it shoots 8 game ticks. So we're going to be recording the splitter, because it doesn't matter where the hammer explodes, it's all about the splitter. So wherever the, the splitter explodes, that's how far the cannon will shoot. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll fire now, and then we'll look at the history of the game ticks. All right, so, whoops. Um, let's see. Okay, so we have our TNT here. So we're gonna look for the first game tick that it flies out of the barrel. So as you can see right here, this is the first game tick it comes out, because as you can see, the X is different, the Y is at 253, so it's obviously hit the top of the barrel, it's already gone out of game tick. So this is the first game tick, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight game ticks, right? So that's just proof that it goes an extra game tick than normal fusions because if you guys are really good with the fusions you know that it only goes seven game ticks including the explosion game tick so yeah that's another benefit to this now the other benefits with the power i didn't really detail into so first benefit being with the power is that since the powers are much closer together in terms of timing it makes making the actual auto comp so if you're making an auto cannon with the boosters it makes it much easier to time it because it gets very difficult when one's falling before the other and you get less room to like wiggle i guess so with it only being one game tick apart instead of four game ticks it makes making the auto composition for the power much easier and since there's less difference in the powers obviously the cannon shoots faster we always want the cannon to shoot as fast as possible when we press the button. So those are the two benefits. Now the last big benefit with the cannon, with the power, is that not so much with theory cannoning, I guess, but more with actual factions cannoning. Because um, I know <laughs> I know a lot of us cannoners, we would like to make cannons, but we don't actually use them, and we don't actually raid with them. But for the, So this is for the actual faction cannoners who, who actually raid. But um, the issue sometimes with with raiding it, so only when they're patching, okay? If they're not patching it, then you don't have this issue. 
So when they're patching sometimes, so there's a 0.2 difference between both powers, so 0.2 seconds. Right, so what happens sometimes is your sand might hit the wall, and then as soon as the sand hits the wall, someone might patch a wall over here, for example. And they might, you know, add the obsidian here, whatever. And then what will happen is the hammer will then fly out and then hit this patch right here instead of going to the wall with the sand. Then obviously, you know, what that, what all means, what happens then is that it doesn't stack in one shot, right? Because obviously the hammer's over here, clipped on the patch, and the sand's over here. So what we've done is, since there's less delay um, between both powers, the chance that that happening is significantly less. So about 75% less chance of that happening. Because there's only one game tick difference instead of four. So say if you're raiding and you have to go through 300 walls, including the patches of course, so it's about 300 walls. And let's just say for example, you may have that issue with about 10 of those walls where someone patches while while it's firing, so, the, so your sand hits here and your hammer hits here for example. So, so if it's 75% less, we're looking at, it at about, instead of losing 10 walls, we're only losing about two and a half walls. I guess we got to be accurate here for maths, but um, so a lot, so we we face that issue a lot less with this cannon. So obviously that saves um, time and the amount of walls we're going through. So we can get through the base quicker, is what I'm saying. Is the end of the day sort of thing I'm trying to convey. Um, yeah. So I'll be releasing just this. Con I'm not going to be releasing my other cannons that I've made with this concept. Just the concept cannon. Just so you guys, because it's very, this one's very basic with the wiring and whatnot. So it's very easy to understand with how it works. So I'll be releasing this. Um, that'll be in the description below. Um, I'll probably be uploading, start uploading again. Not going to make any promises, but got a few things to upload. So, so one more video about this Cubics thing. So not this concept, but another thing about a Cubics. And as well, another video about one shot regen busting. Um, and... Another video on this, you see right here. Um, yeah, so hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and uh, I will see you guys when I see you next. Goodbye.